So um, the best way that I can explain things sometimes is just to go ahead and explain it to you and then we'll go back and highlight everything because that way you're gonna remember it and learn it better. I really think that it's important for you to learn these things because a lot of people in our industry don't even know these things. So RESPA, there's four sections to RESPA. Okay, that's an even number, right? Four. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna teach you guys this and then we'll go back and we'll highlight stuff. So don't worry about looking for where it's at. So there's four sections to RESPA. And it's four is an even number, so is six, eight, ten. They're all even numbers, but nine jumped in there. I don't know why they have number nine, but they do. So I'm just gonna tell you what they are and then we'll go back and highlight them. So RESPA, section six, is about servicing. It's about the people who service our loans and making sure that they do what's right for the homeowner. Simple as that. They have to make sure that when they do a payoff statement, it's within a reasonable amount of time. They have to make sure that the borrower feels like maybe the numbers on their statement isn't correct. You know, the borrower can write in and ask for a qualified written agreement or written statement that they wanna know something on their mortgage. It's just making sure that the mortgage servicers are doing what's right. Number eight. I don't know why number eight is so hard for people to understand. No kickbacks. If a real estate agent comes to you and says, I'm gonna give you this client, and, you're, and if you do the loan, I want you to pay me something for it, that's illegal, okay? And both the real estate agent and the loan officer are gonna get in trouble. It's up to a $10,000 fine with one year in prison. It's not worth it. Besides that, the real estate agent should be making almost two to three times more than you are on the loan, okay? Not just that, but there's, a lot of people that, that don't understand the flyer thing. Okay, the flyer thing. If you walk into an open house and there's a flyer with both the real estate agent and the loan officer on it, okay? That's like one of the biggest mistakes people can make because um, there was a story about a real estate agent and a loan officer where the real estate agent said, um, you know, I haven't closed a deal in a while and I have this open house, can you make the flyers? And can you make the flyers for me? And you can put your name on there too, okay? And so the real estate agent and the loan officer agree to these flyers. And if the loan officer pays for them, even though the real estate agent says she's gonna pay him back, because she didn't pay for it up front, that's against RESPA, okay? They both, if the flyers cost $400, you better be able to prove that the loan officer paid 200 and the real estate agent paid 200. And if there's a question like that somewhere floating around, they're both at fault. They both can have a $10,000 fine and up to one year in prison. No kickbacks. It's simple, okay? If you did not do something to earn the money, you cannot get paid for it. Just like if you don't go to work, you're not gonna get paid, right? Okay, so that's section eight. Section nine, this one baffles me the most. I still see it, I see it all the time. I just saw it on one of my agent's contracts. The seller wants to pick title. Seller has choice of all services. Why don't they understand that this is illegal? Okay, the seller does not get choice of title. I have one right now where the seller's taking choice of title, but we look to see who's the title company, are they a large title company, and why does the seller wanna use them? Because the thing is, is if the seller is in cahoots with the title company and there's a problem on the title and down the road your buyer finds out that there was a lien there that was hidden by the title company, that's a problem. So the buyer gets choice of title, period, done. Section 10, section 10 is about your impound account. They call it one of two things. It could be called an escrow account or an impound account. Make sure that you know that they're interchangeable. And on the escrow account, they wanna make sure that the lender's not collecting too much money for the taxes and the homeowner's insurance. So the impound account is the collection of the taxes and the homeowner's insurance and making sure that they don't collect too much. Now, the problem with this is most home buyers, when they start reading rules and regulations, they think they know everything about the rules. And I had one um, person who took my class say to me, well, Sharon, my, my buyer is really upset because they're collecting six months of taxes. Okay, well, they're gonna collect six months of taxes if you're closing escrow in like um, September or October because they have to make sure they have enough tax money to pay for the property taxes that are due November 10th and late after de um, December 10th. They're, they're due November 1st, late after December 10th. 
So they have to collect a certain amount of money in some cases, depending on what time of the year the transaction is closing. So they're making sure on RESPA Section 10 that they're not collecting too much. They're also allowed to collect one, um, one uh, it's like one twelfth. So like, let's say that your property taxes are $6,000 a year, then that would be what, $500 a month. So that's all they could collect. So one month of taxes per, um, per payment, and they can usually have at least one month extra in a pad. So that's your RESPA stuff. And now we're gonna go into detail about what you need to highlight.